Thank you again to my very kind neighbor who is providing the materials for today's eco printing experiment, which will be iron dye blankets. So exciting. More science. Let's do it. Okay, good morning. I have created an iron bath that is looking very distressingly rusty. And we are going to take our unmordanted fibers that we are going to use as iron blankets with no expectation of them being useful for anything after, but they could be, they might look cool. And we're going to roll those up as a blanket and I'll show you when I layer it, but we're going to get them in here, swish them around for a good long time so they can soak up iron. Um, we're going to make sure we agitate it a lot so there's not too much particulate iron just lurking in there. And I'm going to leave this in the sink because I don't trust myself to remember not to touch anything else uh, around me because it will react to any tannins. So they can be a bit of a pain, these iron blankets. But we're going to do our best. And uh, some dyers like to actually dip the plant material into the iron before laying it on their fabric. So I'll consider doing that. I don't want to introduce too much iron. We have very strong tannins in this house. Okay, so I've laid out my mordanted fabric. I've laid out my leaves. I'm going to cover this in a strip of the iron blanket. I'm going to squeeze it out really good because all the iron particles should be embedded in the fabric. So I'll squeeze it out really well so it doesn't instantly start making a change. And my plastic ready. I've got the pot starting to boil over there. And we're going to be steaming these, not putting them in the water. So I've got my rope ready and we're going to start wrapping. So here's the first one, which is California pepper. Okay, so we're looking at what these guys are going to look like. I am going to put them into the steam bath, which looks like this. Well, I probably shouldn't grab that. But I have little, uh, a little steamer tray in there to keep it off of the water surface that you can see. And they're going in for two hours. It does say that even if you have mordanted fabric. So two hours they will be going in. I will try to get a picture once they are all noodling in there. Okay, we can see that there are already reactions happening. So I will give everybody a turn. They've been in there about 10 minutes. The last two are going in and I will see you in two hours to remove them. I might move them around a little bit in between, but we'll see. Okay, it has been about an hour and 45 minutes. And I just, they looked, they look done, so I just, I don't think they need to go much longer. It's a very aggressive steam. Where's my tongs? Okay. I do see that there have been reactions, for sure. I see colors changing in there. Oh, but also we're looking through the dye, the, um, the iron blanket. So we're actually seeing the iron blanket on the outside, not the inside, which is kind of wild. Okay. And the other three. And then once these are completely cooled, just like all the rest of them, we'll unroll them and see what our experiment and data gathering has resulted in. See you in a bit. Alrighty, we're ready to roll and unwrap our weird burritos. They're very scary. Uh, but I wanted to mention a couple things. One, many people in their iron dye blankets or whatever dye blankets they use, they will use like a flannel or a kitchen towel even because it makes a very good carrier for the iron if you feel like it's not getting enough iron in there. Um, I found that out after I'd cut up all my fabric, so I did not, <laughs> didn't do anything about that. And then I realized in reviewing the footage that I did not show you it with the actual layer on it. So we will be doing more um, dye blankets, so I'll be sure to get a video of that. But which one should we do first? Look, you can see the reactions. Isn't that exciting? Yee! I'm so excited. Okay. Um, who do I think is the least promising? This one looks like it went everywhere. This might be the... Those leaves look green. They also look long. Okay, this might be the weird maple leaf from next door. Oh, shoot. I forgot. I have my paper. Hold on. Pause. Back with the list. Also, I'd like to say that the red maple thing, I don't think that's an actual maple tree. It's some tree that has very red leaves. 
I don't think it's a red bud tree because it doesn't have the heart-shaped leaves. Well, whatever it is, I think that's what's in this one because they make a very bright color. So let's see how we did and if we actually got any iron reaction. Now, some of these, if you'll recall, are mordanted in tannin, which will have a reaction with the whole fabric and iron with the iron blanket. Some of these were wrapped in uh, just regular like alum mordants. So it will require the leaf tannin itself to interact with the iron to get a print. So you're relying on kind of two different processes. So the top sheet here is the iron. Wow. Okay, that's the iron dye blanket. So that's pretty cool by itself, just the dye blanket. This is the weird thing that's not a maple leaf that looks like a maple. It's red like a maple leaf. I don't know what kind of plant it is, to be perfectly honest. Oh, we definitely got prints, yo. Look. Look how weird. Even the dye blanket's cool. Whoa! 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 <laughs> Look! Wow! We did it! Wow! Oh man, that's so cool. Okay, I have to do a I have to do one of these um with uh the fancy silk now that I know that it works and I'm not a failure. Not that the failure is bad, it's data collection, but you don't waste your best materials on the data collection portion of your science. That is not advised by any scientist. Okay, so we pick off all the little goops and we'll wash all that later. But look, how cool is that? And then here's our dye. This is just the blanket and the fabric, because it's uh, the tannin and the leaf reacting, the fabric should actually, even this fabric that was unmordanted. Ooh, apparently a lot of this will have to be washed off, but I just want to show you it. Maybe I should actually peel it off by the stem. Shocking that that worked better. Good Lord, Erica, come on. I'm too excited. It's too exciting. I can't stand it. Peel faster. It's like Christmas, except really smelly. I call these bog burritos or bog, uh, no, I guess an enchilada would be less appropriate. I'll stick with burrito. They're rolled. Bog dolma. These actually look kind of like dolma leaves. Okay. I just wanted us to be able to compare the positive and negative prints, and then we'll launder them and do it again. Cause that sounds fun and like science. Ugh, such a mess. Okay. I'll figure out a better way to do this as we go, or I'll pause or something. But wow, look, look at that. How cool. Well, I would say that's a success, wouldn't you? Oh my gosh, I'm pausing to take a picture. Took a picture. That is way too cool. Okay, this is gonna be our keep bucket and that will be our trash bucket. And we'll see how much of this stays. Wow! We did the science, we followed directions. It's shocking how well things go when you do that. People should follow instructions more closely. Okay, I'll do this other skinny one. Okay, so that one was the maple leaf thing. So that's oak gall plus alum. Again, a, a real winner. The oak gall plus alum is what we have learned because I believe that was our really good print last time as well. That's apparently not where I cut this. Whoops. Sorry. That one's on me. Ugh. These do get stinky. You can, I mean, you can recycle them so much before they go in the compost because it's cotton. Okay, so this one is, let's see, we'll know by the plant who it is. So if we unroll this way, this is how I put it in was like these because the plastic comes off and then the wood comes off and then this would have been our iron dye blanket. I suspect that we may lose this pink color. This I haven't actually seen stay when washed, but if it did, cool. So this is actually the dye blanket. This isn't even the, 
the intended recipient. So this is the weird, there's this really red boxwood that my neighbor had. I don't suspect that this pink will stay, but it's very beautiful to admire while it is ephemerally in our presence. And he had this really weird red leafed boxwood that was just kind of a strange looking plant and I didn't know if it would print and I didn't really know what it was to be perfectly honest. But we got some interesting deep green out of that. So we're, there were definitely tannins interacting with the iron bath. Interesting. So this was oak gall and alum. This one was the... Oh no, wait, this was oak gall and alum. This one is the alum triformate. Okay, so this is the cold water... The cold water dye. Very cool. Okay, we I will be shocked if that pink stays, but if it did, wow, and we'll go cut down a bunch more of those leaves, won't we? And apparently it's just for the little tushes that they do a lot of pink. Okay, who's next? Who else was a skinny one that I think will be very deeply colored? Okay, this looks like... Wow, look at the, look at the reaction. Well, we'll just do this one. It's too fun. They're all beautiful. This was much more successful as far as getting leaves to print. I'm not saying it's more successful as far as like data collection because there you can't be less or more successful at that. It's just it is what it is. Okay, but this one looks cool. And look, we got some of the lines from our ties. That's why some people put on the plastic is so that they avoid those lines. Some people like it. But this is a long one. This is our eucalyptus. Or one of two. Oh my god, it smells so bad. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, it's also so long. Why did I think that it was a good idea to make... Why did I make long ones of these? Lots of experimenting all at once, I guess. Okay, so this top piece are dye blankets that turn totally black from the tannins. So look at our dye blanket. How cool... First, how cool is our dye blanket? That's just the iron dye blanket. That is so cool. Wow. Okay, eucalyptus coming in for the win. Okay, this is the other portion of our dye blanket. I had to put down two pieces because it was so long. Trash, trash, oh, I see leaf prints. You guys, I think we flick flack and did it. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Okay, so here's our Negative. I, I think I like the dye blanket better, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Okay, what did I put the eucalyptus on? I put eucalyptus on... Oh, straight oat gall. Well, that makes sense. Okay, so this one was mordanted in oak gall only, which explains the incredibly deep reaction. Wow! I wanted it to look like kelp, and I think I captured that. It looks very kelpine. But then, look at the dye blanket. The dye blanket is just as cool. Stop it. I love it. Okay, I'm pausing to take another picture because it's way too cool. Okay, I got my picture. So this was kind of a dark fabric to start out with, but it's almost like the oak gall printed onto here. They like printed onto one another, which I am just loving. Okay, that one, an absolute dream. That is a great print. Very proud of us. Thanks for being my moral support while I talk to the cats and, you and no one else. But this looks so cool. The shadowing is really fun. And we got beautiful stems. Look at that. You guys, we did a good job. I'm proud of us. Okay, you know what? I can probably stick the dowels back in the bucket for all I care. Okay, who's next? Who is the next victim? This, I think, is the forest pansy redbud tree and I believe this one was done in aluminum triformate no that's the red boxwood I think this one's done in oak gall as well 
So we would hope that it would have a big reaction because it's done with the tannins and the iron blanket. Oh yeah. Oh my. No, this is pepper tree. This is alum only. Ooh, I'm unrolling it upside down. We'll flip it back over. This is the pepper tree. I guess we'll be keeping the dye blankets too. They're too fun. Trash pile. Oh God, that smells. Okay, wow. This is the dye blanket. This is not the part you keep. Not at all the part you keep. And wow, wow. Okay, so this is not the part you keep, though we will be keeping it, because that is some serious original bog camo. Amazing. Okay, let me peel. Oh God, that's really these. Pepper tree is a smell that I associate only with allergens, truly. Let's get this off. Oh, we got really great print too. Pretty darn crisp, if you ask me. I don't know why it wouldn't be, so I will count that as just a part of the natural art. Okay, so that's the back side. And then this is the right side of the print. Look, so cool. Oh my gosh, all of these are wonderful for their own reason. Okay, so this was the pepper tree. So that fabric was alum only. So it really didn't change the fabric. The fabric stayed its kind of its original color. There's a little bit of rust staining to it. But the only thing that is interacting with the tannins in this case is the iron. So there's no tannin in the fabric is what I'm saying. It's got a different mordant. But those look so crazy. I'm so excited. <laughs> These are gonna be so fun. I hope that like everything doesn't launder out. It shouldn't, I've done all the right things and all the right steps. Okay, this one looks like it's had a very strong reaction as well. The fabric is very dark. I seem to not remember at all which ones I put in because I have guessed wrong almost every time now. But this one does feel long. This is one of the longer ones for sure. And let's see what we did here. Which plant is this? Okay, this is me proving out my idea from yesterday. This is eucalyptus on loquat. And I was committed to those strips of loquat and I saw that there was actual reactions on them from our last print. And I was right because it flipping printed. I can see it. And it looks like it did the exact same thing that the oak gall tannins did which is kind of like impart their own color onto this. So it gave up loquat to the iron and the iron gave up iron to the loquat. And now we have two dyes. Oh my God, this is so cool. Look, stop it. Oh my goodness, we made art, so much art. Wow, this is just our crappy dye blanket. I mean, it's not crappy, obviously, but it's, it was supposed to be the throwaway portion. Wow. That is wild. Okay, great. Love that. And I guess I've left the red buds in suspense for the very end. And then this is our actual printing page. Let's see. I don't think this one's the oak gall one. Because this looks like loquat. Is this my dye blanket? Did I unroll it upside down? I couldn't tell you. Did it leach all of the loquat color out? But look at it. Look how cool. Oh my goodness. If that's not the coolest thing. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, cutting down every eucalyptus. Now, interestingly, these eucalyptus leaves were quite dry. So I might actually try to dry them. No, I'm pretty sure this is the loquat, yeah. That was just a really great combo. My idea has proven out. I am validated. Look, look at it, look at it. Okay, last one. And this one I'm actually the most nervous about because the 
Forest Pansy Redbud did not seem to like love the process last time, but I also was maybe not just doing the process that it likes. As we have seen, some dyes really like wool, some dyes really like the linens, some dyes really don't like anything. And you have to convince them to stick to anything. Okay, saving that. And let's see how our red bud printing came out. Definitely got the plastic a little warmer this time. Okay, so this will be our red buds. And there's our dye blanket, which again, I've never seen this pink stay. And this reminds me of that other red thing I got from the neighbor. So that makes me think that these will be a little bit muddy, but that's okay. Not a bad thing. We're just learning what pigments stay. I do see some printing though. Okay, so this is our printing canvas. And we'll pull, oh, see, some of these get really great prints and some of, oh, oh, look, they're like little rainbow hearts. I don't think all that rainbow color is gonna stay, but if it did, wow. Wow, look at the yellow hearts. I don't think you could reproduce hearts that perfect with wax resist. Redbud trees, coming in clutch. Okay, so there's our dye blanket. Again, the trash part. And I don't suspect all these pinks will hold because they washed out of the last printing that I made. Look at the yellow hearts. Look how cute they are. I love them. Okay, speed picking of leaves. Oh gosh, some of these are gonna have to get washed, I think. I didn't leave enough of a stem on them to grip for sure. Oh, there's some good ones. I wonder what makes them print specifically better than others. I remain fascinated and baffled as to what it is that makes them decide to print or not. I guess that's the whole game, isn't it? If you're a professional, look at those. If you're a professional printy person, I suppose that's your whole like life goal is to make reproducible prints. But like how, how is this not basically just like photography of a moment in time in your garden? I just kind of love it for that aspect. You could use like your flowers or branches from a tree or something that's significant to you. If you have like a memorial tree that you grow for someone, you could make printings of the leaves. See, some of these didn't print at all. And then some of them do crazy, really good printing. Have not figured out what is the primary dictator of that. Oh, maybe it's the ones that I've put right side up to a better print. It's probably something like that. Oh, right, there's two pieces. Oh no, that's the dye blanket? Are you kidding? No, no, this is the dye blanket. You've gotta be kidding. Okay, well, just apparently more than things in iron and quit. Because <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, obviously. The, the dye blanket is the only thing I would have put in two pieces. So here's our wonderful dye blanket that came out far better than the actual intended print. I mean, if you wanted, if you wanted an eco print, if you wanted just like a crazy heart polka dot print, great. Got that for you, too. Okay, so here's all of our other little leaf prints. <laughs> that are not supposed to be <laughs> leaf prints. This is the throwaway portion. Wonderful. And then this is the actual leaf print that we were trying for, which is gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. But wow, how funny is that? Well, I am just absolutely geeked over this, and I am going to go wash everybody off. Stop saying gonna, which I say about 86,000 times a video now that I edit my own videos and I've noticed that. I am going to go wash these, and we will see how much of this beautiful pink falls out, which I don't expect to stay, and then marvel over the positives and negatives of our beautiful artwork. I think that's actually his positive and negative right there. Yeah. Amazing. All right. I'm going to go wash these and I will check back with you in a minute. Please forgive the sound of the fans, but check out this absolutely beautiful print. The top here is actually the dye blanket that would be discarded usually. I will be keeping this one for fun. I think it's gorgeous. 
And this is our print. The mordant on this one was just straight oak gall. The leaves were eucalyptus. There's not a lot of print, but there's definitely a lot of resist. So these fancy cottons seem to do really good resisting, not super great at printing because there's not a ton of texture to the fabric. These muslins that I was using as just junky throwaway fabric take incredible prints because there's a lot more texture to their fiber, I think. And those look absolutely amazing. So honestly, as much as I like the fancy cotton and how much it reacts, I think I really like the texture of the cheap rough muslin better. But that is print number one for the day on pure oak gall alum. And we did about a 2% iron blanket. Okay, here's our second eucalyptus print, which is incredible. Look at the dye blanket. We got a very similar result to what we got the other day with the leaves and a 1% iron blanket that we just steamed by itself with leaves on it. So that's kind of amazing. And that's just our dye blanket. This is our actual piece we were dyeing. And this one is in low quat. But it is also made from one of the fancy cottons. This is from Clothworks. It's an American made uh, fancy cotton. And again, same thing we had before. Even though there are spots that are really nice prints, the m more highly textured, significantly cheaper muslin is what picked it up the best. I absolutely love this one. One, because I got to reuse my loquats and it still worked. So it wasn't too dyed. I just uh, wrapped them too tight that time. <laughs> but I'm so happy with that one. Now this print is our Forest Pansy Redbud. Sorry, I'm trying to grab my little list here. This is our Forest Pansy Redbud, and this is the actual print, and it won, it was done on just oak gall, which really surprises me because I would have thought it would have had a much stronger reaction to the iron, and I also would have thought that it would have turned more of this black, which is the iron dye blanket. What I think is really interesting is that depending on which way you put the leaf up or down on the red bud, it either gives you an absolutely perfectly pristine print like these, which I love, or it seems to give you these really cool bright yellow hearts. And I know that the leaves are heart shaped. I'm, I'm aware of that, but I didn't think that the hearts would kind of get maintained in the dye, and I think that's really unique. And then I also really like how it kind of looks like there's a little shadow. There's like some little additional shading around each leaf print. So this one, oops, this one is still so interesting to me because there's still some really good printing. And it only seems to want to do this on the roughest of fabrics. But again, most of the things I'm doing are meant to be done on silk or protein fibers, and we're doing them on not that. So this one, I think, made a pattern that you couldn't, maybe couldn't reproduce if you tried. But I wish I could unpack those perfect red bud prints. Because they are just so cool when they come out tidily. Like, look at that little guy. It's so great. All right, so that is our next one. Now, this one I put in knowing it would come out in a somewhat unexpected fashion. Because I got it from what I think is some sort of boxwood bush. But it was very brand new growth that was very stressed, and so it was very bright red, stressed from the cold. It's been bizarrely freezing at night here. I, you can't plant anything. But anyway, 
uh, I used those large leaves and I think that they are just too fragile when they're little baby leaves to survive the dye process. This is also done on the fancy cotton, which seems to prefer to be more of a uh, resist than it actually likes to make a perfect print, which is okay. That's just, if that's what you're going for, that's fine. But you can see that up here, we got some very faint, but they are indeed leaf prints. Faint though they may be, there are leaf prints on there. So this one, I definitely will reuse both of these pieces of fabric. I can dye them with something or do something weird with them, but they will be recycled back into the apparent uh, fabric business I've started in the last five days. Okay, coming in on the home stretch, this is our pepper tree, which is on a piece of alum only muslin. And again, these rougher muslins just seem to take a better print, and I wonder if that's why they do so well on uh, protein fibers like wool, is because they have more to grip on, like physically, like it's rougher. But check out the dye blanket. Now, yellow is really hard to get in dye uh, without it graying, and this fun highlighter color is not easy to attain nor do I think you could reproduce that just by like boiling up a pepper tree and that would smell so bad you should not do that. But you can see the shadows of his leaves over here that directly correspond to the awesome iron over here. And any of the variation in this one can probably be accounted for how much iron was actually trapped in the dye bath. And I probably will, now that I'm having so much fun at this, buy some cheap cotton muslin, or not muslin, uh, flannel, that's a little fluffier for holding more of the iron into the uh, I, uh, dye blanket. But I love this iron speckling that is like very much an ideal for me. It's a less than perfect print, but it is perfect for me. Ooh, I just love these. Now this dye blanket is typically what you would more likely see when you pull out <laughs> um, a dye blanket. The other ones are just really cool, happy accidents. But I have to say that the best print I got last time was also on this. And this is from the weird maple thing that I suspect is not a maple, but it's in the maple family. This was talented, <laughs> mordanted on uh, oak all tannins and alum, so it got both treatments, and it came out incredible. It gets a really even color. While it doesn't print the leaf ultra perfectly like some of them do, and again, the super fine cottons and vegetable fibers seem to really struggle with uh, printing the actual leaf or I'm just using the exact wrong leaves, but uh, the range of color it gave is awesome. Like different leaves of different ages, I'm guessing. Um, this came out incredible. I couldn't explain to you why the leaves are different colors. They all came from the same plant. Uh, they just weren't attached to a stem, but so are those ones. But we got all these really great little weird interesting bubbly bits where there's uh, imperfections in the plastic or in my rolling and this is just ideal for me I just love this I would just make a billion weird handmade blankets out of this anyway uh, this one is my current new favorite fabric this is the Kaufman muslin it's an American made fabric uh, and it's called Kaufman and I got it at eQuilter where they have a bunch of prepared for dye fabrics. So this Kaufman muslin knows how to print. And I am so excited that we have reached the end of this set of the eco printing experiments. I'm sure I'll have lots more now that I've gathered all kinds of new information for my brains. And I will be so excited to share the next experiment with all of you. Have a great night. If you could like it, subscribe, subscribe, I'd be so appreciative. And if you'd leave a comment letting me know what is your favorite print 
out of all of these, I would be eternally grateful. I hope you have a great night, and I will see you in the next experiment. Bye!